Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we have the review of Ubuntu GNOME 17.04. Yes, it's April again, so that means the, uh, the, the April release of Ubuntu is coming out, and so it's not just Ubuntu GNOME, we're going to see, uh, you know, regular Ubuntu, Zubuntu, uh, uh, Kubuntu, uh, you know, all of the official releases, they are coming out uh, April 13th, so... And that's why we are here taking a look at Ubuntu GNOME 17.04. So, not an earth-shattering release, um, but there are some significant changes here. Uh, definitely, definitely stuff that we want to take a look at. And uh, for the most part, uh, as I've been going through through uh, testing and whatnot, this is, I've been really happy with this uh, with this release couple of little bugs that I ran into and I'll talk about those later but uh, for the most part uh, it seems like a pretty good release so let's start with the stuff that applies to just Ubuntu in general uh, we are now using uh, Ubuntu or I'm sorry we're using uh, Linux kernel 4.10 series uh, so that is upgraded from the last time I think uh, the last release oh, might have been using 448 4, maybe 44 4. I can't remember exactly but it is an update uh, so we got that going on for us um, let me take a look over at my notes here oh the other big one and this one's kind of I consider this one be pretty significant and that is we are now going to swap files instead of a swap partition or a swap space so to kind of backtrack a little bit if you don't know what I'm talking about um, a Linux installation has traditionally used what is re what either a swap partition or a swap space that can be used as uh, as a as a uh, a place to store stuff that would normally go into the RAM when uh, your RAM is full. It's also useful for sleep, hibernation, that sort of thing. Um, so with that uh, with that swap space or swap partition you want it roughly the same size as the amount of RAM that you have now that wasn't a big deal back in the days when your computer had one or two gigabytes of RAM or even less um, today you know my system my desktop system that I'm on right now I have 16 gigabytes of RAM I have several friends who have set up um, Ubuntu gaming boxes so they can you know they're they're doing the whole steam thing and they are rocking 32 gigs gigabytes of RAM that is that's a lot of space that is just being set aside and may never be filled up <clears throat> so going with the swap files basically um, I guess the way you could think of it, you don't need to create a separate par partition or a separate space, and you're going to make these files as needed. It's traditionally, uh, you know, this is how Windows does things, and, you know, back in the day, there were good reasons for having a swap partition, but going with these swap files, uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. So anyway, um, other things, you know, we've got uh, we've got general software updates, so like LibreOffice, we're now running the LibreOffice 5.3 series. A um, lot of improvements there, uh, and actually I'm going to try to, in the next few weeks, get a full review of LibreOffice 5.3. Uh, just because I have not done a LibreOffice review in a while, I want to kind of highlight all the, all the changes and whatnot that have come down the pike. It's really, really becoming a great... Actually, it, for a long time, it's been a great uh, uh, office suite, but uh, some of the improvements they've been making recently it makes it better and better, so really happy with that. And like I said, a lot of the other software has been updated to newer versions, but kind of getting to the, the GNOME focus kind of stuff now, let's start looking at some of that. So what kind of new stuff do we have that is specific to Ubuntu GNOME 17.04? Well... At when when we look at the whole GNOME stack, GNOME suite, however you want to call it, we are now at GNOME 3.24, um, 
for the most part there's a couple of apps that have not been upgraded to 3.24 one of those is Nautilus the file manager it is at, still at version 3.20 however I did see in the Ubuntu GNOME staging PPA that uh, uh, 3.24 is there so maybe let me put it this way if you like to play with fire um, go ahead and, and and add that PPA and you can upgrade to 3.24 or wait around a little bit and maybe that will move to um, one of the more stable uh, PPAs. Um, uh, that one's that that PPA it's more it's more stable than um, uh, oh, uh, their testing PPA. Uh, that one's you know, that one's, uh, you know, the playing with fire while holding a can of gasoline in your hand. Um, but uh, um, the the staging PPA means, yeah, it's there. It's it's probably ready, but uh, maybe not quite fully baked. Um, so anyway, kind of that's a kind of a at your own risk kind of thing. So anyway, Nautilus is still at 3.20. Also, um, Evolution, the email client, is still at 3.22. However, it is not installed by default. Also, uh, GNOME Games is at 3.22. Once again, still not installed by default. Now, speaking of GNOME Games, let me pull it up because I've never taken a look at this one on any of my reviews. So let me just go to GNOME Games right there. Oh, it popped up on my other screen. Drag it over here. Okay, basically what it gives you, it gives you a view of all of your installed games. Now, this probably isn't a big deal for you if, um, you know, you had a couple of games, you know, two or three games. Not a big deal. But if you're somebody that has a pretty big game uh, uh, library, uh, this could help you, you know, kind of sorting through and all that kind of stuff. Also, it's not going to display only the default games uh, or not, I wouldn't say default games, but uh, the the um, the Linux games that were installed through the uh, um, through the software center or whatever. You can also, if you've got Steam installed, it's going to display all your Steam games. Um, and let me go and pull open. Uh, if you go to preferences, and you can see these extensions. So you'll also see if you've got some of the emulators for for running. Um, like the old Atari games, uh, the old uh, Game Boy games, those sort of things. You see, you got all these plugins, so that all of those will be displayed as well. So um, it looks like for just about anything that you've got running, uh, you're in it, you know installed here, um, it's going to show up in the uh, in the game library. So pretty cool there. Uh, another GNOME app that was not installed by default, I did install it myself, and uh, I think, uh, you know, the, maybe not ever. it's, it's not going to be for everybody, but a lot of people probably like it, and there's this GNOME Recipes. Now, for those who, uh, you know, live on Raymond Noodles uh, and Microwave and Takeout, this is probably not going to be a big app for them, but... Uh, uh, for others, it may be. So you can go on here and you can cruise uh, recipes that other people have posted. Um, you can go and add your own recipes, create them, uh, save favorites, uh, send it to other people. You can see down here at the bottom where it says Featured Gnome Chefs. Go and take a look and see what they got going on. Um, and then, like, if you pull open a recipe... You know, boom, it's got directions, all kinds of good stuff there. So definitely worth taking a look at if you like to cook. Um, like I said, the, um, uh, you know, Raymond Noodle uh, uh, crowd probably need not apply here. The Epiphany web browser, uh, also known as web, just as web these days, has also received a lot of updates. I'm not going to go into everything in this video because I am going to do a separate video on this, but just kind of some of the highlights. Uh, they've revamped the uh, the address bar. You've got some uh, some improvements to the uh, to bookmarking. You've also got improvements for uh, your working with your tabs and whatnot. One of the things I think is neat is you got this this little down arrow over on the side. You can go and pick you know pick which one of the tabs you want to um, 
have open so not a big deal if you just got a few going on like I do right here but if you got a big long list of, of tabs open and I know a lot of people that do that uh, just because of the kind of work they're doing they're doing research or whatever they might have a ton of, of, uh, of uh, pages open and uh, boom you know they got this list right here might be uh, pretty helpful to them so there's that kind of stuff there's some pri privacy improvements um, so definitely uh, keep your eye out for when I get that video done and uh, take a look at that uh, let me take a look at my notes here what else did uh, do I have oh the uh, the 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 night light that is a it's kind of an interesting thing and let me pull that up now to look at that it's in your settings and under display so you could also just do a, a search for uh, for displays but down here where night light is now I've got it turned off but you can go and click it on and you can have it uh, sync to sunrise so whatever your you know bit whatever the sunrise is for your location it'll sync to that or you can manually set times and uh, you can see right here it says night light makes the screen color warmer this can help to prevent eye strain and sleepiness so uh, so you know and not a big feature but uh, an interesting one and uh, if you're someone that is uh, uh, you know going to use your computer uh, late at night fairly often might be useful to you uh, while we're talking settings there's some other settings that have been um, I guess you say revamped so that for a little better UI printers is one of them I've uh, got a new look here still got the same function but they've revamped it. it's kind of a, a cleaner um, uh, I guess more efficient more modern look to it um, so there was that one and users they reworked users as well and I think there was one more let me look at my notes uh, uh, oh the online accounts that one as well uh, they they reworked the uh, the UI on that so very nice there other places that we got a little reworking of the UI is our notifications so if you come up to where you're it's showing your day and time go and click on that and you can see you got your drop-down calendar I don't have any notifications right now but if I did they'd be showing up right here uh, weather is going to show up over in here and then if you got set up for times and other time zones they're going to be listed over here as well you could just go and click on weather from here and uh, yes we want to grant access and you can go and pull open your weather location um, now right now it's just running off of my default location but uh, uh, let's try uh, Cincinnati there we go Cincinnati Ohio and there you go gnome calendar has some improvements as well you now have let me go full screen with this here uh, you now have a week view uh, whereas before you just had the month and year so you can go to a week view month uh, yearly view however you want to do it so um, great improvements there uh, you can go and sync it with like uh, your Gmail account so if you got uh, Google Calendar going on you can sync your your calendar events with that which is what I've done um, that works really well now the bug that I ran into with with the calendar with GNOME Calendar is that I could not open it um, just by clicking on the uh, on the app so like if you do a search for calendar hit enter and it just tries and tries and tries and really nothing um, now you can go and open a terminal um, yeah you can see it's not just not doing anything you can go and open a terminal and type in gnome dash calendar and boom it opens up for you so what's going on I'm not sure hopefully they will get that bug fixed soon um, but that is pretty annoying now me personally um, since I'm using uh, since I'm using Thunderbird I have the um, lightning extension added which is the, the Thunderbird calendar so 
not having gnome calendar or you know having issues with it not a really big deal for me because i'm not using it but uh, i can see how it's going to be annoying for other people um while i'm on the subject of bugs let me talk about um uh, other issues for the most part everything ran great the way that it should um just taking a look at my notes here um, oh, the uh, the software center. When you open that up, um, it could not install uh, 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 dev files, but it tries to. So, like if you downloaded, I don't know the the dev file to install Chrome, and uh, you know you uh, you uh, tried opening it with the software center. You go to a page in the software center, click install, and it just sits there nothing happens now I downloaded uh, and installed well not really downloaded but I installed through the software center GDebbie and you can install uh, uh, dev files that way um, but it's just kind of annoying that you know the the uh, software center tries to install but it doesn't work um, you know hey maybe you should just go and uh, and have GDB installed by default and have that set up to it's going to handle devs by default at least that's kind of how my reasoning would go um, other than those bugs those are really the only only bugs that I found uh, I'm not saying that there's not going to be some others out there but those are the only ones that I ran into uh, pretty much every uh, every app I've opened it closed it and all that and like I said calendar was really the only one that I had issues with it opening um, everything else seemed to work right out of the box so I'm pretty happy with that um, so let's kind of shift gears just a little bit uh, one thing that I wanted to talk just a tiny bit about is many of you have probably heard the announcement that starting with Ubuntu 6 or Ubuntu 18.04 um, uh, Ubuntu will be going to the GNOME desktop as the the main or the the primary desktop uh, it is dropping unity now I'm going to have an entire video on kind of my thoughts of that and all that kind of stuff so I don't want to go in a whole lot of detail here on that but I just want to kind of bring that up that you know next year gnome will be the the default desktop or the official desktop however you want to say for regular ubuntu um, so i'm going to have a couple of follow-up videos talking about my thoughts on that um, the direction you know at least in my opinion that they should or could go and uh, you know that sort of thing and having said that that pretty much uh that pretty much finishes this video up I think well one other thing I am going to um, with with what I've said about uh, Ubuntu uh, moving to GNOME I am going to have a video where I talk uh, kind of an intro to uh, to the GNOME desktop for those that uh, um, you know are are new to GNOME, uh, you know, have been Unity Unity users, or they're coming to Ubuntu for the first time and really don't know. Um, you know, there is a little bit of a learning curve involved with with GNOME. Uh, however, you know, it is my favorite desktop environment, so uh, um, I'm probably a good person to do a video on that. Uh, you know, how to, you know, how to do this and that and whatnot on it. So, anyway. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below. I try to get to it as soon as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I hope to see you all on my next video. Thanks a lot.